Dr. Tamara Beckford with Your Care and Dogs, where we provide health and wellness info to empower you to take an active role in your health right today. I'm mean, super excited because we are doing a special segment. We're doing the Your Care and Dogs, Dogs Who Care segment, where we bring dogs from all over the world who provide health wellness tip for you. And the best part is that they leave their info. So if you would like to be part of their team or would like for them to help you in any way, you can find them here on our Your Care and Dogs website. Now, I'm super excited, as usual, but this time I'm really excited, excited for our guest today is Dr. Michelle Quirk. Woo! Now, why am I excited? I'm going to tell you why. Alrighty, so let's give a little bit of background about Dr. Michelle. Alrighty, so she graduated from Penn State University College of Medicine. Then she did her residency in pediatrics at Georgetown University Medical Center. She's a pediatrician in the Pennsylvania area, right? But most importantly, she's a marathoner. Woo! All of you runners out there. Yes, she is your running queen. Woo! So she's going to give us all those tips about running. She's a run coach. Why, why, why? Because she is passionate about helping busy professionals prioritize their well-being through running and fitness. Woo, Dr. Michelle, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Dr. Beckford, that was quite an introduction. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I've never come on with applause. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yes, we are going to get used to it because you are going to drop some gems. Why? Marathon season is upon us. Woo! Yes. We have yes. someone's right now, they're training for New York Marathon. Down here, training for the Chevron Marathon, which is here down in Houston in January. And then I'm pretty sure that Chicago, Boston, all of those other cities, marathons are coming on. So this is really exciting for the marathoner. Woo! But some of us are still on the couch. Yes. And we're trying to figure out how do we get off the couch? So Dr. Michelle, let us know what are some of the benefits of running? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Where do we start? We, we have physical benefits. We have mm -hmm. mental benefits. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, people think automatically about physical benefits, right? Like mm -hmm. it's good for your heart. It's good for breathing. Um, it's mm -hmm. good to keep you healthy and fit. It, over time, it can lower your resting heart rate and lower your blood pressure and help mm -hmm. your cholesterol and all of these great things uh, mm -hmm. prevent diabetes. Um, yeah, and keep you strong into old age, which is what we want to do. <laughs> Absolutely. But it also has a lot of mental health benefits. Um, and really, uh, people notice that they have less uh, anxiety, less depression, mm -hmm. um, really feel calmer when they run. And it's not just running, right? All kinds of cardiovascular exercise. So there are so many benefits. Um, and then, you know, there's the social aspect to it, the running community itself, and developing friendships and running partners and running races. And mm -hmm. I know I catch up with, I have a group of Run Disney friends. We, we love the Run Disney races. And of course, in the last year, we really missed that. So wow. ho hopeful to get back there. Wonderful. <laughs> my run disney pals but yeah so many benefits yes. really great. so many benefits to starting so you know what are some ways that we can start from yes the couch oh, from the couch rolling. how do we roll off the couch and get into position <laughs> okay we're gonna get off the couch um i would start really by walking mm. if you are new to running or you tried it in the past and you've had bad experiences, mm -hmm. get out there and walk. That's really like the first, the first step. And then um, I always tell people start low and go slow. I think okay. we have unrealistic expectations of ourselves yeah. sometimes that we're going to get off the couch and go run, you know, three miles and it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> but we end up coming back uh, huffing and puffing, hurting all over, red in the face, cursing mm -hmm. at it, mm -hmm. and quit and don't want to do it again. Yes. And that was me. Why is Dr. Michelle talking about me on my own podcast? <laughs> no, but you are very, very right. Go ahead. Give us some more. <laughs> 
Yeah, when I started, um, you know, I wasn't a runner as a kid, mm -hmm. and I, I was the, the last person finishing the mile run in school, and it was really a slog. And um, I tried the sport a lot of times before it, it really stuck and I became consistent with it in my 30s. So, you know, it's not too late to start. <laughs> you don't have to have been a, a high school track star or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, really starting where you're at. And if it's on the couch, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But just recognizing that you want to start nice and slow with um, maybe just five minutes or 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. if you're a regular walker, um, a lot of my regular walkers are just, they have a lot of fear about mm -hmm trying to run so they're yeah. like i'm good with walking i'm good with walking and you can stay good with walking but if you if you want to try some jogging uh, i call it the mailbox technique so in mm -hmm. your neighborhood you can um just walk you do your usual you know five minutes of walking and when you get to the mailbox do a little jog for five or ten seconds between the mailboxes right. you could pick you know lamppost stoplight, mm -hmm. whatever it is, <laughs> but you do that and then you walk again. And then a few minutes later, you can do a little jog. So you don't have to go out and, and just run continuously, mm -hmm. um, but you can do a nice jog and, and you're not trying to sprint, you know, you're just trying to keep a nice slow pace, right? Right above mm -hmm. walking, just a right. little above just walking. Little yes. Yes. And start that way. That's a good way to start. Nice and gentle. Exactly. Because I know that you know, speaking for a friend, and we're going to be talking about our friend a lot during today's interview. And if you can't figure out who my friend is, that's okay. <laughs> but speaking for a friend, <laughs> there's a lot of runner's envy out there. You know, you're a walker and then you're like, and you see someone who's a runner and you're like, oh man, I really wish I can do that. And you know that there's this possibility. And that's when Dr. Um, Michelle or Coach Michelle, we'll call her Coach Michelle for today. We'll remember to do that. Uh, when Coach Michelle will tell us that you can just start a little bit above walking. So we're not talking about sprinting, not because you watch the marathon and there's all these really great athletes. You don't have to be them, right? You can start a little bit above walking and do a little five to 10 second jog here in between and then step it up a little bit right yep that's so the now way to do I, it. yeah <laughs> absolutely so now we'll talk a little bit about like you know there's so much resistance <sighs> doctor or coach michelle you know i really would love to run however i don't know what shoes to buy and so ah, this might not be for me <laughs> <laughs> there are there is a lot of hangups about sneakers, a lot of hangups about shoes. Yeah. Um, this is probably the most common question I get asked really by friends and family. Um, so mm -hmm. with with running sneakers, you definitely I think this is the most important piece of gear, really, mm -hmm. besides yourself and your legs. But right. <laughs> I think exactly. having a good pair of shoes is mm -hmm. important to support your, you know, all of you <laughs> while you're out there. So mm -hmm. um, people ask what's my favorite pair and i can't i can answer my favorite pair for me but it's really um a very individual kind of thing and it's based on you know your running history and what terrain you run on whether that's the road or a trail or a track mm -hmm. um and you know based if on if you have a previous history of any injuries like mm -hmm. i had a, a foot issue so i wear a specific kind of sneaker and if you look you know you can do a google search there are so many brands and types within the brand it'll make your head spin <laughs> and <laughs> people get overwhelmed like i don't yes. know what to pick so i'm just not going to do it mm -hmm. so the best advice really is um, take yourself to a local running store if you have one mm -hmm. um, or if you uh, live near a city, usually there is a bigger chain store like a Fleet Feet maybe, or um, another one is Road Runners. And you can go to the store and the, the people who work there are really sneaker experts and they're very well versed in um, all the different types within the brands and the new features of the shoes. So they'll, they'll ask you about your running history. And I always tell my um, newer runners and my beginners to not be intimidated to go in the store like that was me. I was mm -hmm. scared to go to the store. Like, oh, they're not, I don't know. Like I'm not, I'm new at this. Yes. 
I'm not like racing. I'm, I'm a back of the- And I'm probably not even considering yourself a runner at that point. No. Why would I be going to a running store? Exactly. Yes. yes. And so I tell people though, you know, all of the running stores I've ever been in, everybody's so nice and so welcoming. And mm -hmm. just remember every runner started from somewhere right? Mm -hmm. Like you didn't just come out of the womb and become a marathoner. So <laughs> everybody Absolutely. started somewhere and they'll, they'll help you and they want to, you know, give you a good experience. So you keep going back to get more shoes and more gear. And, you know, as you work up from your, uh, from the couch to the marathon, you know, yes. they want you to keep, keep coming back. Yeah. We want you to be healthy, right? We want your healthy yep. feet, healthy, yes. happy feet. <laughs> yes. So go to your running store. <laughs> Absolutely. Go to the running store. So now here's the thing. All righty. So you're doing this 5K and you finally made it off the couch. You're like, yes, I've been training, you know, and I'm doing my 5K. And they, you know, say go. And you're at your first mile. And then you see the 13-year-old who just zooms by you, you're huffing and puffing, and then he zooms by you in the 5K race, and then you look at your race time, and that 13-year-old is up there, and you're down there. Mm. Speaking um, and asking a question for a friend again, how are some ways <laughs> that we can overcome that? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, th there's a lot of mid-race hangups. And even in my training, I used to run um, around a trail at a college that was nearby. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I got lapped by the cross-country team, mm -hmm. you know, a lot, a lot of times. Yeah. And so you just, yeah, you have to adjust your expectations mm -hmm. <laughs> and try, uh, maybe try on the mantra, run your own race, mm -hmm. run your own race. So you don't have to keep up with the the teenager who's uh, the speedster going by mm -hmm. um and likewise you know i've there are older people who are yes. way faster than i am and yes and that's really How get, yes absolutely <laughs> when you see the gentleman or the ladies just walking past you're huffing and puffing you're at mile two now because you're like okay a 5k it says five but it's only 3.1 miles and you hit that marker <sighs> you're going and then they just zoom right past you <laughs> yes yes be you know it's it's definitely a mindset shift mm -hmm. there but you have to be happy with your progress right now Absolutely. you you have to celebrate your own win that you got off the couch and now you're in this race Absolutely. and and really they might have been doing this for years and years so you don't yeah. know you can't compare where you are to where somebody else is because we all start at different places and everybody's pace is different and that's what i love about races really like mm -hmm. we can all you know, even the elite runners and the professional runners, we all start at the same start line and get to run the same course. Of course, it takes me a lot longer and most of us much longer than them, but, but it's still really cool that you can experience the same thing that the, the very yes. elite, you know, in our sport get to do. So that's cool. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, one of the things that really was a, um, a question that I didn't realize is that you're running a race, one of those races, but it's okay if you can't run the entire race. So I initially thought that if it said, I'm still going to use the 5k, a 5k that you had to run for the entire 3.1 miles. If not, you're just not be able to do it. So, no, 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 let's speak to those. It's like, oh, yeah, you can walk, honestly. Um, so my mom is a very brisk walker, like very, very, very good, very fast. Like her, yeah. her walk pace may be someone's run pace, mm -hmm. but she, she brisk walks the races and sometimes does a little bit of jogging, but no one says you have to run the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people train with, um, it's a really great method. It's called run, walk, run. Um, mm -hmm. if you know, Jeff Galloway, um, he, he really helped bring this, this method to, to the masses and mm -hmm. people have wonderful success with it. And you can go any distance, right? Like you can do yes. one mile, you can do ultra marathons, but, but yeah, it's, it's taking deliberate walk breaks. Um, so you, mm -hmm. you do short, short run, short walk, short run, short walk, and you become like Pavlov's dog when the interval timer goes off You're like, and that's yes. how you do the race. But, but it, ha people have great success with it. And I've trained a lot of people and I've used it myself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, you don't have to run the race continuously. And most people, 
walk the uh, the aid stops, like the water stops. For mm -hmm. example, in the in the marathon, there are a lot of aid stops. It's a long way to cover, yeah. and so I was taking a walk break roughly every mile to be able to drink my water and my Gatorade because if I'm running, it's slashing all around and. That's it's just true. a disaster so <laughs> yes absolutely so if that was a hang up that's one of the things that you know that you can do is that you can walk during parts of the race it's not However a much you see want. who can run continuously it's not the olympics right and everyone's yes. just staring at you <laughs> like how dare they walk what <laughs> no and everybody's so worried about their own performance mm -hmm. no one is staring i promise i mean yes. there, there's people cheering for you but mm -hmm. they're not paying attention to your performance i promise absolutely <laughs> absolutely so now we've made it to the 5k yay and yay. now we're looking forward and we're saying wow you know i've done that 5k and i felt pretty good the race was very early in the morning and i didn't think i was going to wake up for it but I'm glad I did. And I've had so many people cheering me on and I got this medal and now I feel like an Olympian. So I wanna move on to a 10K and then move on to a half marathon and then eventually move on to a marathon. Like what are some key things that you can do in order to progress from one step to the next? Yeah, I, I like the, the stepwise progression. Now, that's not to say you couldn't come back from that 5K and say, I want to go for the marathon I'm next. Do an ultra marathon. Yeah, <laughs> people do. People yeah. do. I like the stepwise progression so that you can build your endurance a little bit to be able to go those longer miles. And it's important to remember that it takes time mm -hmm. to develop the fitness to do these longer races. So give yourself plenty of time. Like it's great to have all of these goals and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to happen overnight. It can be over the next, you know, two years, three mm -hmm. years, whatever mm -hmm. you, whatever you want to do. But right. I, I like putting races on the calendar um, mm -hmm. to have that date. Like if you, you finish that 5k and you're like, I think I'm going to go for the 10k, which is another, three three point one miles so mm -hmm. <laughs> put put it on the calendar for a couple of months later or six months later or a year later whatever it is and mm -hmm. and work toward it and then as you get up to the the half marathon really over like a 10 mile distance mm -hmm. things that you have to think about that are a little bit different like fueling becomes a mm -hmm. lot more important when you're out there for more than 90 minutes mm -hmm. so there's more aspects to the training that you have to take into account and learn and adapt along the way so i would just say don't make it an overnight goal like if you mm -hmm. want to run that marathon you'll do it but give yourself plenty of time a marathon training cycle is usually around like 16 to 20 weeks mm. half a year you know <laughs> it's, yes. it's yes. a long time it's a long time and that doesn't mean during that process you know you'll you'll be running a 10k and you'll be running a half marathon so you can certainly progress through mm -hmm. all of those distances but i like to to break it into smaller chunks of goals that that keep you going yeah wonderful wonderful and i think one of the great um benefits of being within the runners community and even doing some of these um running activities such as the 5k the 10k before doing any of it i really just thought somebody you were just running and it's just you and the trees or you and the concrete you know but there are people along the way who cheer you on and then there are themed events which are so exciting you know they are the ones who have they have many obstacle races and then you've done like the disney ones like you said the disney marathon what are some of the very exciting stops that they have along the way to help to cheer you on so people know that yeah even though you're running it's really fun <laughs> yeah i think uh there's there's lots of different theme type of races like a mm -hmm. lot of friends um loved the color runs i'm sure you have heard of those and I not did an inflatable I, one. Oh, you did yes. yes um i don't like to get this is a personal thing i don't really like getting dirty like yeah <laughs> while, <I did. laughs> while i'm running and so i'm not a huge fan personally of the the color run i was the person like dodging the stuff <laughs> The anyway. dodge is the, wa the water, yes. the water things, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but there's lots of theme races that you can find that are that are fun. Um, 
the uh, what I'll say about cheering the the first time I ran in Philadelphia we have a 10 mile um, point to point race called mm -hmm. the Broad Street Run mm -hmm. and I had never seen so many people out cheering like you you start at one part of the city and you run all the way down 10 miles mm -hmm. to the Navy Yard and it was cheering all the way mm -hmm. all of those neighborhoods everybody comes out for, for the Broad Street Run. And even Absolutely. when the weather is bad, people are still out there cheering and handing, yes. you know, handing you food and tissues and all sorts of crazy things. But yes. it's, it's very fun and, and a very uh, supportive environment. And Absolutely. yeah, I got my mom and my mother-in-law and I got hooked on the Run Disney races probably about five years ago. Oh, wow. We ran our first um, half marathon, all of us together. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they do a, a really great job, just uh, logistics wise and mm -hmm. aid stops and the volunteers are amazing and people come out and cheer. Obviously it's at the theme park and you're usually there with your family or friends, mm -hmm. um, other runners, but yeah. And, and they have entertainment kind of along the way, bands and the Disney characters. So if you are a big fan of Mickey, like I am, like you yeah. can wave along the way. Oh, that is <laughs> um, wonderful. And there's always something and it's nice. Yeah. So like if you are, of course I say, you know, the marathon is like the ultimate fast pass because you get to go to all four parks, but in between the parks, you're running a lot on the road. So there's boring stretches of miles where mm -hmm. there are, you know, there's an aid stop, there's some kind of entertainment roughly every mile. So it's mm -hmm. just like, I wonder what's coming up next. Keeps you right. Interested. It's an anticipatory <laughs> thing. Yeah. 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 Super wonderful. Fun. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. There are a couple of different races out there. It's so interesting as someone, um, you know, there's a rock and roll marathon. I have, I haven't attended one of those. However, for one year, every time my husband and I took a vacation and went to a spot, it just ended up being a rock and roll marathon there that morning, <laughs> you know, so it was in Louisiana, it was in San Antonio. We're like, are we following along the rock, rock and roll marathon? But that's an obviously good one. And then yeah. also here in Houston, they have the Houston Rodeo. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think it, I did that 5K. That was the, the last one that was right before um, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have some great um, events out there. And the point of this portion of the story is just to let you know that even though you're running you're running with others who are doing the same thing they're kind of focused on their time but there is also entertainment around there to help to motivate you and there are people there cheering you and it's really exciting when the people are cheering you you don't even know them but they're just yeah. so excited and they they're holding up their little cheering squad and telling you you can do it and you know, and even when you're at your most fatigued, for me is when I see that finish line, I'm like, <gasps> okay. <laughs> but then you get this little burst of energy because they're all there cheering you on. And so it's fantastic. <laughs> I know there's nothing like it. And yes. if, if anyone is looking for, if you're looking for a race, because, mm -hmm. you know, the pandemic really put a damper on a lot, a lot yeah. of in-person races, but um, there's a, a website called runninginthusa.com and you can ah. search by state, you can search by race distance, by date, like you could look up the month and your state and see what's going on. And they, they've been keeping up pretty well with virtual races too. Wonderful. So you can do a search and see, see what's out there. Maybe one will strike your fancy yes. <laughs> and you want to get out there. Yes, I think that there have been some Sesame Street races, virtual races going on too. So if you're into the characters and having fun and trying to do things with your family, that's, you know, one thing you can do. Wow. So this is great. Now we found out that, okay, 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 okay. I will get off the couch. Okay. And I will go down to the store and I'll get this running shoes. So I will not use this as a hindrance any longer. Okay, and perfect. then I know that there are, based on the website, there's a website out there that has all the races. So I can't use the pandemic as a hindrance anymore. Okay. Well, you know, the pandemic, there's no more in-person race. Oh, well. <laughs> and if I am not a runner, I can always start by walking and then walk for a while and then start a little bit of jogging, jogging right above the pace of walking and then move on from there to little small intervals. And also know that you don't have to run the entire race. You can do jog, run, or walk, run, walk, run, and still be able to have a great time. Alrighty, Dr. Michelle, you have motivated me. Okay. 
I'm so happy. <laughs> I will do it. I haven't done a race in a year and a half, but as with everyone who interviews Dr. Michelle, I tell you, everyone who interviews her has started running again. <laughs> so she's got another one. Great job. <laughs> I'm so what? happy. I know I got off of a call with someone and then a few days later I got a message that she did go to the running store and she started. So yes. this Every is good. Yes, it's a good absolutely. track record. Yes, she does have a track record. Absolutely. So because now I know how to get in contact with Coach Michelle, but I think you all need to know. So let us know. Let us know where we can find you. <laughs> I think uh, the best place is probably my website. It's mm -hmm. mindful-marathon.com. And if, you, if you're looking for a walking plan, really, to get off of the couch, there is a one-month walk plan on there. It's called Couch to Confidence. And it will, it's just you print it out, put it on your fridge, check it off as you go. And then there, step two, there's a workshop. Um, it's a video um, teaching how to get started with running. So whether you're on the couch or you're walking, that video is good for you too. That's over on the website. And then Wonderful. Good. Yeah. there's more, oh, yeah. there's more. I know. You can find, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram. It's um, at mindful.marathon. And there's a link there to my YouTube channel, which has a lot of teaching videos and some conversations with other runners and experts and on a variety of topics, but it's pretty fun. So check that out. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So at this point, I don't know if you guys realize, but we have no more excuses left. <laughs> we have wiped them out. So we know that it's okay to roll off and do the walk-in, do the little jogging. And it's also okay if the 13-year-old or the 87-year-old is outpacing us. <laughs> We're running our own race. And you're going to enjoy it because there's so many benefits to running and it's not just the benefits the health benefits there's a lot of mindful benefits to it get it mindful benefits to marathon running i don't know if you guys saw it but that's why we are here with dr michelle and coach michelle all in one with the mindful marathon so i'm dr tamara becker with your care and docs all of this great info is available on our website www.yourcaringdocs.com, U-R-C-A-R-I-N-G-D-O-C-S. And you're going to find this podcast wherever you listen to your podcast, on Apple, on Spotify, on YouTube. I think who else has podcasts? Google has podcasts and it's available there also. And the video is available on our YouTube channel slash Your Caring Docs and on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Yes, it's all there. Your Caring Docs, U-R-C-A-R-I-N-G-D-O-C-S. I'm Dr. Tamara Beckford. Let's say Dr. and Coach Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you. Right, bye. <laughs>